Hello, my name is Christy Holcomb, and this is my Module 5 discussion board where I'm going to talk about my top picks for vendors, as well as what items I would purchase if I were able to spend up to $10,000 in the library. So when picking my vendors, I discuss these possible vendors with three different librarians, and most of these are the top recommendations. Some of these are vendors that I just discovered when looking for the items I wanted to put in my library. So for books, I picked these five vendors, Fall at Tidal Wave, Bound to Stay Bound. Those two were the most highly recommended as far as ease of use and availability of books. Then following that is Scholastic, Mackin, and I found National Geographic Kids because I wanted to include some magazines in my collections. For the supplies, I heard that Amazon was the biggest game changer for librarians when they were able to finally add that to their list of vendors. And I saw that too because of how easy it was to order large uh, boxes of items in bulk for very cheap costs relative to other vendors. Uh, the next one was Demco. And along with that, Capco, because a lot of those Capco products come through Demco, but those were really great for library organization and book repair. And then Office Depot was another great place. For furniture, I purchased items from the library store, and I really liked that website. Uh, the second one, surprisingly, is Wayfair, and I was shocked to see how many good quality library items were in there. I didn't expect that from Wayfair, but they're actually uh, relatively uh, cheap compared to some other vendors that were selling furniture. For technology, I picked the Apple Store for Education. I've used this before, and I like how it offers discounts to librarians, teachers, anyone that's using the technology for education. Um, I also picked Epic. I'm very familiar with that, and I like that program, and so do my kids. And lastly, Britannica Kids, looking for a user-friendly uh, database that would work best for elementary students. And then finally, uh, for Makerspace, I went with Oriental Trading Company, which I heard from both librarians as well as UNT. And then I have discovered Stemfinity when looking for a lot of amazing Makerspace objects. Let's start with books first. So I wanted to spend the majority of my funds towards books, and I ended up spending nearly $3,500 in books and programs that would um, have books online. Just because this is what the library is for, we want to have the titles that are going to bring the students in, that are going to encourage them to read and check out new materials. So I think this is where the funds are best dedicated and can serve the most amount of users. Now, I did try to vary um, what ages I was picking books for though I did uh, immediately go to a lot of the series that I see students in grades um, three through five picking out. These are the books that my kids just gravitate towards. So that's what I really kept in mind when I was selecting books. I liked that you could purchase entire series of books, especially through Follett and Scholastic. And so that's what I wanted to start my library doing. So the main series that I purchased in this time was Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Babysitter's Club, Dogman, and Harry Potter. Um, I got those all through Fall at Tidal Wave, and then I purchased the series of Dragon Masters, and I survived through Scholastic. I wanted to make sure that I also included a really good amount of nonfiction. I feel like we definitely gravitate towards fiction a lot of the time, but it is important to get these amazing nonfiction books. So I included National Geographic Kids Magazine as a uh, just to vary up what was in my library, offering the magazines as well. Another big title in my current library is the Guinness World Records books. Even though I tried really hard to find the different years, only the most recent year is available right now, but I hope to get more of those in the future. And I also found lots of amazing sports books that a lot of my kids would like. Another big book series is the draw 50 so it's 50 ways to draw different things and those are really popular with the older students but I also found some younger how to draw books such as this thumbprint drawing book 
For furniture, I looked at ways to organize the space, to promote book displays, and how to just overall improve the environment for reading. So I found this really amazing teepee on Amazon that I think could really liven up the space. And it was relatively inexpensive. I thought it would be so much more. And I would love to use this as a reading tent. And then these flexible seating options up here, they actually came from Oriental Trading and they were one of the more cheaper options for flexible seating, but they achieved what I wanted, something that was easy to move, but it's colorful, it draws the eye. Um, a lot of flexible seating was really expensive and I could see how you could put a whole budget towards that. So you gotta be careful there. I thought I would also need a book truck. Coming from librarians, they say you can never have too many carts. And I thought it would also be useful for bringing books to teachers um, in their classrooms. And so it just works really well for that. And that one I got from the library store. I also got this book display shelf that I think was amazing because it is mobile. It's easy to move around. I think you can move the uh, tabletops around to display. And I would just love to have a dedicated area for displaying new and incoming books. The last item is the item that I probably spent the most on. And this was a storage unit um, that houses 24 shallow trays and 12 deep trays. And I got this from the library store as well. And I really wanted to utilize this for all the makerspace bits and bobs, as well as just the basic classroom essential materials that you would need. And it can just house so many different various types of materials. It was a really worthwhile purchase. For the makerspace, I really utilized Oriental Trading and Amazon, as well as Simfinity. But the makerspace options, I wanted to get a good startup of the different items that I would need. So Oriental Trading offered these two, what they call boredom buster kits. One on the left side here is the wooden kit. And it offers all these little wooden options like the wooden sticks, corks, and clothespins. And then on the other side is the beading kit. So buttons, beads, jewels, and all of that. I also know the value of having items like the magnetic tiles that I got from Stimfinity and a floor puzzle that would be good for different types of grades. You know, people through kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade would enjoy having this large puzzle to do on the floor. Okay, so I have talked about wanting to start a coding club at my school. So with that, I had this in mind, purchasing these Lego items. Uh, this first one is the Brick Q Motion Essential, and it is Lego Classroom, but it comes from Symfinity. And so it's a bunch of moving parts that you can use to build robots and um, just make them move in various ways. Then I got just a basic um, Lego set that had many, many pieces in it to get that started, as well as Snaptricity Circuits from Symfinity as well, to work on coding and creating a circuit. For my supplies, I definitely focus on organization first. So I wanted to start with these uh, cutty uh, bins. Sorry, cubby bins, and I also have some caddies. The cubbies uh, come from Demco, and I wanted to use them if I were going to genreify the library. So I actually purchased two sets of those, as well as the small caddies from Amazon that would be used to house the pencils, markers, crayons, uh, scissors, glue sticks, anything you would need for a, a basic book and build project or something like that. I also went with these plastic storage containers because I knew I would need some bigger storage maybe to put it in the back um, for all the various items you would use just some of the time. And then I went with these happy book in 24 pieces bookshelves, uh, bookends for the shelf just to make sure that the books look organized. I know that those are essential as well as these uh, wire easels from Demco to display books too. And then I know signage is very important in the library. Any librarian can tell you that. 
So I decided to go with these acrylic sign holders also from Amazon. Um, this is one that you could get from Dimco, you could get from Amazon, but I just found that they were cheaper on Amazon and they were easy to clean too. And then lastly, um, I got a stand holder for a barcode scanner, which I'll show you in technology. And then I got Dimco's modern genre labels. I purchased 10 of those because I know that's really important to help readers find what kind of genre they're typically looking for. Continuing on with supplies, a lot of these focus on uh, basic book repair as well as the basic supplies you might see in every classroom. So I'll start with the top. Um, the top ones all come from Dimco. So up here are the Capco um, paperback book protection kit. This is the one with all the little items to smooth down the covers, the cutter board, as well as the Dimco um, uh, book covers on the side here. I really liked using these. I've covered lots of books with these and I think they do a really good job to protect paperback books. And then I think it was really important to get some book tape. I've been told by many librarians this is the best book tape that you can get is this Dimco Crystal Clear book tape. And then I decided to go ahead and imagine I needed to purchase these customizable barcode labels. Some uh, librarians said that this was included uh, with their district. Some said it wasn't, so I just went aired on the side of caution and got the barcodes. And then lastly, all of the basic classroom supplies, such as the giant uh, Crayola class packs of markers and of crayons I got from Amazon, the set of craft scissors, and all-purpose glue for all of the needs that we would have for any makerspace or building projects. And then finally, we have our technology. So I've also talked about wanting to lead announcements or teach kids how to create videos, edit videos using the green screen. So I decided to invest in a webcam that could be used to record and um, send out the announcements uh, created by students, as well as a blue microphone to ensure that it is a quality sound and not something that's hard to hear over the announcements. And then I've heard that you always need another scanner um, because they can go out. So I went ahead and purchased a, a Dimco scanner, as well as a green screen for the announcements here. Um, that one was from Amazon. The iPad mini, I went ahead and just decided to purchase one and thought it could be really used uh, to promote certain apps or connect to any screens that you might need. In the future, I would love to purchase more of these and have a whole like classroom collection of them. But for now, I just went with the one and this was from the Apple Store for Education. And then lastly are the databases that I wanted to utilize. So the first one is Epic. This is the unlimited subscription and it's only for about $80 a year, but there are so many digital books that will, that are audio books that can read to you that are just digital eBooks that kids can look through. And my kids know how to use this very well. They love this technology. Um, they really enjoy reading on Epic. So this is definitely the one I wanted to invest in as well as Britannica Kids, um, which is finding that database that was a right fit for my type of school. And that is all of my purchases. Thank you for so much for listening.